over one hour of the zombies iceberg let's go Real quick, thank you to Cod Lore Facts on Twitter and YouTube. There was a couple things in this iceberg that I was not 100% sure on, and they helped fill me in. So if you are interested in Zombies Lore, make sure to check them out. Links will be down there below in the description. Hidden Radios Ever since Nocturne and Toten, Treyarch has hidden radios throughout their maps, whether they just be tiny little music easter eggs... secret voice recordings that contain just little bits of information to help us piece together this entire storyline. And back in the earlier parts of Zombies, they were definitely more cryptic and not as loose with the information that they were providing. And whether they be radios or film reels or any of the other various means that Treyarch uses, if you are playing a Zombies map, you can bet you're gonna find one. Stand up! Stand up! Good. Look at me. Over here! Good. Now walk forward. Excellent! Further. Keep coming. It's alright. Stay there. Calm down. I order you! Kill it! Bring me another. Bus Route B. Bus Route B has some credibility to it. It was actually a huge piece of cut content. Before the release of Black Ops 2, Transit had a significant amount of cut content taking out of it before launch. And if you would like a more dedicated video to this, I will leave a video link in the description. I go over way more cut content in Black Ops 2 Zombies, so make sure to check that out. But Bus Route B was actually going to be a part of Transit, but was axed before the release. And there are still plenty of hints towards Bus Route B that were still left in the actual game. In Spawn, if you come over here to the Bus Route poster, it will show you a Bus Route A and a Bus Route B. And for Bus Route A, it says no night services. And some of the cut content in Transit was going to be a day and night setting. So there were so many possibilities that they could have done with Bus Route B, and we really didn't figure out a majority of this information until relatively recently. And when I say that, I mean like within the past couple years, because I do keep forgetting that it's 2024 and it's not 2020 anymore. But during Black Ops 2's life, this was a huge theory that the community just kept scratching their heads trying to figure out. But alas, it was true, but we would have never been able to activate it in any way. Loose Change Under Pack Bunch I think this one might be a typo. I think it was supposed to be perks because I, I don't know of anything revolving loose change under pack a bunch, but similar to that, if you do go prone in front of perks, you will be able to get some points. All dating back to World at War Darius, if you went prone in front of double tap, you would gain 25 points. And through Black Ops 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so on, we slowly start to see this become a more and more popular trend. Back in the older Zombies, it was just a minor, minuscule, little tiny easter egg, but nowadays in Zombies, it's so mainstream, every time you see a perk, you're bound to go prone in front of it. Raygun Every Time This is obviously a reference to the amount of videos that were uploaded that would claim to give you the Raygun every time if you followed a certain amount of steps. This was really popular back in the World at War and Black Ops 1 era, but after that, it really started to become a meme and everyone kind of caught on that there's no real way to get the ray gun every time. But the amount of videos that would claim if you shot, did a 360, then go prone, then run away, and then come back to the box, and the ray gun would be waiting for you, there were just so many videos like that, and every one you uploaded was bound to get some views. Peter McCain's Corpse in Shinonuma, in Spawn, there is a dead man whose decaying corpse happens to be hanging from his own parachute, all while he's missing one of his forearms. And this man is none other than Peter McCain. Peter McCain was an OSS spy that was sent in to infiltrate Group 935. He started working at Darius, but was eventually transferred to the Asylum, aka Verrucht. And while they were performing the experiments at Verrucht, Peter McCain was eventually ousted as a spy, but fortunately for him, an outbreak occurred at the asylum and Peter was able to escape, but not before he lost his forearm. Peter was eventually told to rendezvous at the Rising Sun facility where he eventually jumped over the facility, but died shortly after. So that is the true identity of the Hanging Man in Sheena Numa. R-408-8-N. 
And on the World at War Zombies app, there is a Peter McCain Easter egg. Once you have opened up all the areas on the map, you will be given a shovel as a melee weapon. And then you just have to find where it says dig and dig up the grave. This is not in the regular Zombies versions. This is only on the Zombies app. And if you dig up his grave, you will be rewarded with a free Wonder Wolf. Samantha owns the Hellhounds. For World of War and Black Ops 1 Zombies, Samantha is the one in control of the zombies, and she is also partly in control of the Hellhounds. The Hellhounds were originally Fluffy, Samantha's German Shepherd, and it seemed that Fluffy was pregnant and expecting a bunch of puppies. Now, you must be very diligent, Mr. Samantha. Owning a dog is a great responsibility. Yes, Father. Oh, I love her. You must feed her every day and walk her and be very careful when you play with her. You know she's going to have puppies. Really? Can I keep the puppies too, Father? We'll see, Samantha. One step at a time. But before she could give birth to the puppies, they did an experiment on Fluffy, which turned her into a hellhound. Edward, tie the damn thing down! We can't have it running around during the test! It's tied down now, Dr. Maxis. Initiating test number five. Subject is within the test chamber. Activate power. Searching for vitals. No reading, Doctor. The subject has disappeared. Dr. Maxis, we've done it! Don't be foolish! Test number five is unsuccessful. Subject has vanished, yes, but has not reappeared at the main place. Recalibrate the damn system! Ah! And when it was time for Richthofen to ultimately dispose of Maxis, he ended up trapping Samantha and Maxis in the same room with a hellhound before they were teleported away. Initiating test number six. Subject is within test chamber. Activate power. Damn it, Edward! Did you set up the device correctly? Yes, Doctor. As per your specifications. If you had done it to my specifications, then it would have worked, wouldn't it? As usual, your incompetence has... What? Do you hear that, Doctor? Where's your fool? Test number six is the best, but the experiment has caused some kind of electrical force to energize within the chamber. Well, open the door! Doctor, I don't think... Open the door! Now! Damn it, Samantha! I told you never to come in here! Edward, get her out of here! Yes, Doctor. What's wrong with her? Daddy, what did you do? Rocky! Come back here! Samantha! Stop her! Easy! Come here, Samantha. Good girl, Rossi. Gently, Samantha. That's not Rossi anymore. We must get out of here. What? Edward, what are you doing? Open the door! Edward, open this door now! I'm scared. Don't go. Stay by me, Samantha. Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
So it is technically true that Fluffy eventually became the first Hellhound, and because Fluffy was pregnant, you have an infinite spawn of Hellhounds, and that was Samantha's dog. So yes, Samantha owns the Hellhounds. Nikolai Belinsky. This is a reference to the Origins intro cutscene very early on. Before it was actually fixed, Nikolai's last name was spelled completely wrong. Instead of it being B-E-L-I-N-S-K-I, they spelled it B-E-L-I-N-K-S-I. And this has kind of become an ongoing meme throughout the Zombies community, and only true OGs remember when it was spelled wrong. Ammo Matic. This was a cut perk that was going to make an appearance in Shinonuma and Doris, but was cut during development for unknown reasons. This was going to award the player with a max ammo upon purchase. And there are a couple World of War audio files that can be found that relate to this perk. Max Ammo Machine. Ah, genius. Ammo Machine! What a wonderful idea! Ah, this is a blessing from the Emperor! An Ammo Machine! What a brilliant idea! bleed out faster when crawling. This refers to an old zombies urban legend that you would die faster if you started crawling. So once you have died to zombies or to your own stupidity, the theory went that if you started crawling, you would bleed out faster so people would never crawl and they would always stay completely still. And this was a widely accepted rumor, despite it being completely false. You will bleed out the same if you were crawling as if you were staying completely still. Kino was DLC 4. Kino der Toten in Black Ops 1 was originally going to take place in World of War. It was going to be the fourth DLC for World of War Zombies. But due to many issues, mainly it coming too close to Modern Warfare 2's release date, it was eventually shelved and pushed back to Black Ops 1. The Iron Kite This is a reference to Treyarch sometimes having very poor translation problems. Originally, Der Eisendrak was spelled with an N at the end. Der Eisendraken. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I'm bad at pronunciation. And this translated to the Iron Kite, but they eventually retconned that, took out the N, and just made it Der Eisendrak, which actually translates to the Iron Dragon. The Wonderwaff breaks space-time. When you load up Kinder to Toten and you are playing solo, you will get this very unique radio from Richthofen. Entry 7410, two, one. Perhaps this station will hold the key to the real goals of Group 935. I still do not trust my unconventional allies. But they are of great use to me. But I digress. Who would have thought the MDT was capable of time travel? How many stations does this group have? Where did that little girl disappear to? Only time will tell what new questions await us in this theater of the damn. And this explains how our characters got from Der Reese to Kino Der Toten. Dempsey shot the Wonderwolf as they were teleporting, and it broke space and time and sent them to Kino Der Toten. Blank Portraits In Kino Der Toten, there are numerous portraits hanging on the wall, and out of all five of these, only one of them is completely blank. And each character, no matter who you spawn in as, will have some very unique dialogue if you use the action key on this blank portrait. Maybe what was is no more, but shall be again. This one didn't photograph so bad. Hey, look, it's nobody. Well, someone stole the image from this picture. And for the longest time, the community had no idea who this blank portrait was. A lot of people thought it was Pablo, the Mexican test subject that was eventually replaced by Tank Dempsey. Target tree 1471, date September 2nd, 1845. Dying. Another day, another fair. This time, subject N3WB just slightly at the floor. The Russian subject still smells like urine. Even after he was given a bath from the Laos twice. But I think I might have killed the specimen from Mexico. His spleen is on the floor and he's not moving anymore. I can verify with certainty, however, that the barrier is not located in the spleen. Dr. Ma continue no matter the cost. I wonder what he might think of the experiment, the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> but in Classified, we did get a little easter egg that you could do that would kind of hint that the blank portrait was Primus Nikolai. Maxis's wife is dead. In the story, Maxis's wife died giving birth to Samantha on November 5th, 1934. 
but this has not always been the case. Previously in the zombie storyline, she actually died in Dresden. On the moon loading screen, if you look way down in the bottom, in this barely legible print, we can read, Have fun with Papa in Poland. Mommy will miss you, but she has work to do in Dresden. And as we know, Samantha and Max's were in Poland, so originally her mom was going to die in the bombings of Dresden, but that eventually was retcon, and she was made to die giving birth to Samantha. Richthofen is gay. For a very long time in Zombies, people have speculated whether Richthofen is gay, straight, or somewhere in between. And mainly that stems from the amount of sus quotes that he definitely has. So sharp! So long! Oh, it is so big and long. If I had designed this, it would have sucked and not blown. Oh! It's warm! It's warm and it's on my neck! Oh! Good, that's okay. Buy me dinner next time. Oh, that's usually an extra 50. Oh, it's so big. It's a little gun, but it has a long barrel. Like my college roommate. I don't know if I should swallow it or spit it out. Remember, Edward, you do not swallow if you do not want to. Excuse me, is there something in my throat? <coughs> Sorry, more things in my throat. <coughs> it's a big throat. Ugh. Honestly, you can't even begin to imagine the things I've had in my mouth. Mmm, just like gargling ball sweat. Oops, I meant boar sweat. Mmm. Aha, uh -huh. I swear I'll put anything down my throat. Ah! I'm blind! I'm blind! In my eyes! Holy shit balls! Me too! What did you do, Rick Toppin? I did nothing! There's a light switch! Oh! I think I found a lever! Perhaps this will turn on the light! No! Ah! Let go! That's not a lever! Rick Toppin! <laughs> Elemental Knife in Origins in Origins, there is a glitch that you can do that would quote-unquote upgrade your knife, giving it one of the elemental abilities of the staff. To do this, you have to have completed almost all of the Easter Egg up to the point of obtaining the Iron Fist. Once you have collected your Iron Fist, make sure that you have one of the staffs, go inside one of the robots, and down yourselves and die off. And once you respawn, you will have the elemental knife with the element of the staff you were holding when you died. And this quote-unquote melee weapon is incredibly strong and said to be one of the strongest melee weapons in the game despite it not actually being canon. Black Ops 1 remakes are direct ports. Now, I wasn't sure if this was talking about, like, the World at War remakes in Black Ops 1, or the Black Ops 1 remakes in Black Ops 3, and even then, I'm still not exactly sure what this is referring to, because a direct port is usually when they just take what was in the previous game and pretty much just transfer it into the other game. And even then, I'm not exactly sure what this is hinting at, so that's all I really got for you. Trench Gun Glitch in Black Ops 1 There was a glitch with the trench gun in Black Ops 1 Zombies that made it sound incredibly loud no matter what. No matter where you were or who had it, it always sounded like it was being shot off right next to your ear. And that glitch could sometimes be very annoying. Meat This is a reference to the cut Black Ops 2 game mode called Meat. And instead of me explaining it to you, I will let some of the cut quotes explain it for me. Welcome to meat. The rules are easy. When the meat drops, you finally reach the manhood. I mean, grab it, throw it, don't get caught with it. Zombies will only attack you if your side has the meat. Don't die and you might just win. Feel free to kick it too, my pretties. Get ready to play meat. Meat pile in the center. Go get it. I know you're dying to get your hands on some meat, so get it. The meat has fallen and is begging to be grabbed. Step one, get meat done. Step two, get rid of meat. Oh, you have my meat in your hands. Kinky. Oh, hello, everybody. I'm not going to make an obvious meat joke. For now. 
Get ready to play! Who's ready for a big meat pile? And the only real remnant we still have of meat is that rare power-up that you can grab in Grief, where you could throw the meat at someone and all the zombies will chase them instead. Ultimus Nikolai killed his wives. Through the duration of World of War and Black Ops 1, one of the more hilarious characters definitely had to be Nikolai and his many comments that he had about his various amounts of wives. Canonically, before they retconned it and say it was all just in his imagination, Nikolai was married at least nine times and murdered at least five of his wives. Da, the same weapon I used to kill my first wife. She was bitch. You are ugly, like first wife. Like my first wife, useless. I used this to kill a bear once. She was my first wife. Ah, same weapon I used to kill my second wife. It was accident. She talked too much. Oh, the electricity dancing on their corpses is so beautiful. Like second wife. You are like third wife, always asking for more. I have black hole. Like my third wife, we won't talk about that. <laughs> Smells like third wife's cooking. I loved it. Dempsey. I like him because he's brave. Like third wife. He's going to die one day, but he'll take many with him. Like fourth wife. Hey. First it takes my money, then it disappears. Just like my fourth wife. Oh, that smells disgusting. Like my fourth wife. She pretty though. Pretty and smelly. Weird combo. Guess I'll have to use my bare hands, like with my fourth wife. Always talking. Shouldn't have kept them in that extra 30 seconds, like fourth wife. Ugly kid. I have finally made it to the moon. You were wrong, fourth wife. You were wrong. Sexy weapon for sexy Russian. Most women think so, at least. Fourth wife, not so much. Small and powerful, like fourth wife. Uh, no. They were all big. They could plow fields. This thing sucks harder than Sixth Wife! Oh, <laughs> you're much cuter now, zombie. <laughs> like Seventh Wife. Thank God, I can go home and tell Seventh Wife I now make double points. And about new girlfriend. Ha <laughs> ha! Goodbye, wife number nine! I do not think I will be able to top that one. She died when I blew up the Earth! Fun times! I will miss her. And in my mind, all of Nikolai's wives are canon. The Doctor Wants the Ultimate Power Bastard In World at War, we got introduced to character bios. And each of these bios would give you a little bit of background information about all of our characters. Well, if you take the first word from every sentence and take the first letter of it and you lay it all out, it spells the Doctor Wants the Ultimate Power Bastard. And this Easter egg went unsolved for many, many years. And you would think something so obvious would be solved so quick, but you have to remember, this was back in the World of War Zombies. We were kind of new to the whole Easter egg hunting scene. Richtofen's Head Richtofen's head was cut from Black Ops 2 and was going to appear on the map in Mob of the Dead. The head would have been of Ultimus Richtofen, and even Jason Bluntell himself refers to it as the snapping Richtofen head. And we do even have some of the audio and the animations for it. Oh, oh. Ouchie! My head! Claw! You look great! Claw! Get your fingers out of me! Claw! 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 Hey! I'm over here! <laughs> Why don't you come and pick me up? <laughs> Let's play Toss the Head! Stop leaving me on the ground! Ugh. God, it's really dirty on the ground. Come and get me! So it is a shame that back in Black Ops 2, we never got to throw Rick Tuffin's head around on Mob of the Dead. Eye colors indicate who's in control. So if you pay attention to the zombies' eyes, you can get a relative answer for who is controlling them. In World at War and Black Ops 1, the eyes are a yellowish oranges, signifying that Samantha Maxis is in control. And for a majority of Black Ops 2, if the zombie's eyes are blue, that means Richtofen is in control, and if the eyes are red, it seems to be that the Apothecans are in control. 
And there's no better example of this than on the map Nuketown. Once you are playing on Nuketown, before round 25, the zombie's eyes are yellow. But as you are getting to round 25, the moon easter egg is also happening at the same time, and on round 25, that's when Richtofen enters the MPD and takes control of the zombies, so now he is in charge, thus the blue eyes. Wonderwaff on 5 the Wonderwolf was originally going to appear on 5, but unfortunately was axed. That seems to be a pretty common theme in zombies, cutting things at the last second. But we do still have some cut quotes from all the characters referencing it. Shocking, to say the least. Well, zap my ass and call me dick. It's electric. Da -da 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 -da. Who says you can't capture lightning in a bottle? A spark for the sparkless. Who ordered the deep fried zombie? Take that, you undead communists, worthy of Ben Franklin. This weapon is an honor for Cuba. Zap it up! Burnt by the light of the revolution. I will bring down the lightning of democracy with this. This will end the Z-War. You've been fried. 130,000 miles per hour, 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, a truly effective weapon. Chainsaw in Black Ops 1. Yet another piece of cut content was going to be the Sabretooth, which was a chainsaw that was going to make an appearance in Black Ops 1 Zombies. We do have some of the animations for it, and it would have had a large magazine of 999, which would have maybe been its gas that you would have run through. But similar to a lot of other things on this list, it was axed and we never got to see it. Secret Room Under Pack Bunch I believe this is a reference to the room that is underneath Pack Bunch in Shadows of Evil. When you look at Pack Punch and you see the room under it, it does look like there's something hidden down there, like there might be a secret or something to do down there. But ultimately, it's just an empty room and there was nothing ever that led to it, but that did not stop people from coming up with all these thoughts and theories about what it could do. Elemental Flopper and Origin Coming back to Origins, upon its initial release, if you were to dive to prone with PhD Flopper and an upgraded staff, it would cause the explosion to do an additional elemental damage based on whatever staff you have. But unfortunately, it was eventually patched out, so we never got to really play with it too much. But this is definitely one of those things that I wish they never patched out because that's pretty freaking cool. Brains. This is a reference to one of the weapons that you can obtain through console commands in World of War Zombies called Brains, where your character acts like a zombie and can swipe like a zombie. And this in and of itself was a cut mode where the player would actually become a zombie. And there are some cut animations that we still have of this to this day. So Brains did kind of come back for Black Ops 2 Zombies, but it still will never hold the same relevance that it did in World of War. The Illuminati The Illuminati is a mysterious organization that used to have a lot of relevance back in World at War and Black Ops 1 Zombies. The Eye of Providence can be found in various of maps, and even some notes and Illuminati code can be found. For an example, on Reese, there is a note in Spawn that reads, Edward, it's time, kill Maxis. But now in Modern Zombies, the Illuminati isn't really as prevalent, but they still do have some ties in Zombies. On August 30th, 1925, Dr. Edward Richtofen officially joined the Illuminati. And on August 11th, 1936, Maxis invites Richtofen to join Group 935, and he agrees, secretly acting on behalf of the Illuminati's interest. And he kept acting on the behalf of the Illuminati's interest all up until the point where he entered the MPD. After that, he cut ties with the Illuminati and told them that Teddy is a liar when asked about how he could betray them. Paris instead of Moon. Now for this one and a couple random ones throughout, I'm going to have a special guest explain it for you. What's going on boys? Tim Hansen here. I've been summoned by Crazy Rabbit to go over a few interesting Call of Duty Zombies factoids for the iceberg. Did you know that BO1's DLC 4 Moon was actually supposed to take place in Paris? That's right. Richtofen's grand scheme was to be finalized in Paris, France, but with a last minute change of heart was instead in outer space. How do we know this? Well, for one, in Moon's game files, it is referred to as Zombie Paris. Also, if you rewind to Doris, it's hinted at with this picture of some Zs hanging out by the Eiffel Tower. It's also believed that because MW3 around the same time was so heavily predicated on Paris as well that they didn't want to overdo it and instead chose the moon, which I totally agree with. Despite some glaring weaknesses, moon is one of the coolest maps and I wouldn't trade that easter egg in for anything. It was the best. Okay. And then the Paris map got turned into moon. 
I've, I've heard about that. I yeah. guess the moon in the early stages was Paris, and yeah. then it got reworked into being on the moon. Well, it, it, they, how, do you, how do you make that jump? So they, they, you know, and it was a fantastic team, you know, it was a different kind of group of guys, but a fantastic team took it, and then just certain of the little ideas got mm -hmm. moved. And I don't want to say it was, it was just Paris, because it wasn't. Paris is a very different map. But mm -hmm. Paris had the idea of a no man's land, and it had the Eiffel Tower, and then underneath that was a teleporter, and then there was the ah. catacombs of Paris underneath that. And uh, the idea was that you went into the kind of teleporter, and the, and the, Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower was essentially a conduit for the power for it. Mm -hmm. And then you got transported to this middle of oh, nowhere that's... where the Pack-a-Punch was, and it was just zombies all coming at you. Mm -hmm. There was no cover, and uh, it was brutal. Um, so, so would say the zombies all coming at you, would mm -hmm. that maybe see, be reworked into like the no man's land we had in Moon? Yeah. Oh. So that was, that was that idea that kind of moved over. Dempsey knows he's in a game. All the characters occasionally break the fourth wall, but Dempsey by far does it the most. There are numerous quotes on almost every single map where Dempsey at one point in time will break the fourth wall and reference Treyarch, reference the player, or really anything that would let us know that he knows he's in a game. Ow! My shins! When's Treyarch inventing shin armor? Hey, look at that. No power. Wait, does power even make sense in an ancient temple? Seriously, Treyarch? Seriously? Everyone thinks Tack is boring, and maybe he is, but you gotta have that one stale guy to make the rest of us a little bit cooler. This is like waiting for the midnight release! I thought we'd have a new objective by now, but no! You guys just never give the community what they want! I got the achievement, yeah, yeah. Alright, a weapon more random than Nikolai's script. And less barfing. Fun. Hey, player! Focus! We need headshots, man! Oh my gosh, they hit yet another song. Where do they get these original ideas from? Hey, Treyarch, I solved your stupid objective! Damn, keep forgetting to update my Facebook page. Check it out, a new ditty by Elena and Kevin. Thank you, Treyarch. What, are they gonna put a music Easter egg in every map now? Another Easter egg? Ha! <laughs> How do they do it? Hey, Treyarch, can we get a new objective, please? knocking in the dressing room. Keynote or Toten is the single most bone-chilling map out there. This is thanks, in large part, to the subtle yet horrifying atmosphere and the mysterious lore. There is a myriad of Easter eggs, one of the most intriguing of which being the knocking in the dressing room. If you approach this barrier and remain quiet, you will hear a panicked knocking, as if somebody were trying to escape. I'm sure you've heard this one before, perhaps a friend put you onto it, but if you were lucky or unlucky enough to discover this on your own, especially as a child like ya boy, it is unnerving to say the least. So who's knocking? Unfortunately, there is no concrete answer, but there is one particular theory I subscribe to. Scattered throughout the map, you may have noticed what appear to be some cryogenic storage units containing what appear to be zombies? That would be the safe bet. And you also may have noticed that one of them is open and empty, implying that something had escaped. The escapee may have somehow gotten trapped again and is knocking in the dressing room. I'm not sure, dude. But it's a creepy thought. Kino is a creepy map. There's actually knocking in several locations, one of which also being a door in the alley. Duris told the future. I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to, but if I had to take a guess, I'm guessing that it refers to the cork boards on Darice that have various pictures of past and future zombie maps. Littered throughout the map, there are these various boards, and if you look closely, you can see what appears to be Call of the Dead, Kino der Toten, Verrucht, and the ever-elusive Paris map. So yes, Darice kinda did predict the future, it gave us all of the Black Ops 1 DLCs. Zombies occurred after the campaign. Back in World at War, the only way to get zombies was to completely finish the campaign, and it was an unlockable easter egg that would occur once you completely finish the campaign. Once the credits were done rolling, that infamous Nocturne Tone intro would start playing.
Dempsey was one of the Marines in Verrucht. World at War Verrucked really didn't start the zombie storyline, it kind of laid the foundation and the real storyline started with Shino Numa. So in World at War, the four marines that you play as, none of them was originally supposed to be Dempsey, but later that was fixed and Dempsey was actually made to be one of the marines that survived. Wait, I know who your friends are. Verrucked, that's where I know your name from. I went there to rescue you, but you were already gone. I want you to know that I tried, Peter. We really tried. We came looking for you. Me, John Banana, Smokey. I know, Tony, I know. Griffin Station is visible from Therese. If you load up Therese and you get a sniper rifle and you take a look at the moon, you can see what appears to be 115. And for the longest time through World at War and majority of Black Ops 1, this is what it appeared to be, was just a large chunk of 115. But after the events of Moon, it has led people to believe that instead of seeing a large chunk of 115, you are actually looking at Griffin Station. The Zombies Remember Their Past so in Zombies, it is widely believed that even though the zombies are still trying to kill you and eat your brains, that they still have some remembrance of their past. If you go onto Ascension and you aim your reticles at a soldier zombie, they will instinctively try to dodge out of the way. But this does not happen with these scientist zombies. So that kind of leads people to believe that these soldier zombies still remember their training. And on Die Rise, the zombies actually have quotes and can give you some of the creepiest, creepiest voice lines you've ever heard. <laughs> Maxis's betrayal was foreshadowed. Now I'm not sure if this is referring to when Richtofen betrayed Maxis or when Maxis betrayed the player. If it's the first one, then this could be a reference to the note that I mentioned earlier, which was written in the Illuminati code in Doris's spawn that says Richtofen, it's time kill Maxis. Or it could be a reference to Black Ops 2, and at the buried endgame, if you completed the Maxis side of the Easter eggs, he pretty much wipes out the earth and everything you love. The process has begun! Now I control the ether's energy! I can at last reach Agatha! Ah, you fools! Why did you listen to him? Regretfully, I must inform you that neither the earth nor its people will survive. Ah, I tried the heart to warn you. Once the gateway is open, I will finally be reunited with my dearest Samantha. Hello? Are you forgetting something? Even if your wretched daughter is still alive, she has my body! If you are so eager to re-enter the physical world, Victorfin, I will grant you that fish! And this was foreshadowed in one of the radios in transit. Smart, huh? <laughs> you think you can manipulate everybody into doing what you want, but we know the truth. <laughs> All your calculating works and your sinister agents. Hmm? You mean to destroy this planet and kill us all? <laughs> We're not gonna help. No way, no how. So yeah, keep talking. But no one's gonna hear you because we're destroying everything. Everything electronic is done with this evil radio box thing. So no matter what it has to do with Maxis, someone was getting betrayed and there was a lot of foreshadowing to it. <laughs> Every player is trapped in their own universe. 
Now, I believe this is a throwback all the way to a World at War theory. So in World at War Darius, if you look at the clock, it goes ahead three seconds and then immediately reverts back and then keeps doing that over and over and over again. Well, this spawned a very popular theory that every player is trapped in their own segment in time. And that's why there is infinite amount of zombies. And that's why no one is coming to help because they're isolated in their own universe. They pretty much have unlimited ammo, unlimited zombies, no outside help. And the reason that no one really ever notices. Of course, this theory did not turn out to be true, but back in the World at War and Black Ops 1 days, it did kind of help explain a lot of the things in zombies. <laughs> Call the Dead Crew Died of Hypothermia. So this is yet again another old school theory that the Call of the Dead Crew did not die due to zombies, but instead died to hypothermia. And we do know that the Call of the Dead Crew eventually did meet an end because of Black Ops 3 radios. It's been six weeks since the rest of the Call of the Dead cast and crew went missing. Hollywood's lost its fucking mind on this story. An entire production vanishes? Crazy talk. I told you this is why you don't shoot in Siberia. So if agent on line one, manager on line two, I needed to sort this quickly. I'd rather zombies come for me than an agent. That's real horror. I don't need that. But the reason people say that it was the hypothermia and not something else is because the whole reason that there were zombies at Call of the Dead was because Richtofen and the gang had to go there to get the Vril device. So it is assumed that when Richtofen and the gang first got there, that's when George got taken and that's when the zombies started overrunning everybody. But right after Richtofen and the gang teleport away, Samantha no longer has a need to kill these people and stops the zombie attack. Now, of course, in the video game, this doesn't happen after the Easter egg because it's a video game. But lore-wise, people seem to believe that once Richtofen and the gang left, the zombies no longer have a reason to be there and thus stop attacking them. And since the zombies pretty much killed everybody else and they kind of got left stranded, they naturally would die to hypothermia. Points are 115. I think this is a reference to some of the quotes on Moon and the quotes about soul boxes and Blood of the Dead which tells us that souls are made up of ethereal energy, which in turn is just 115 with special properties. So in a roundabout way, I guess that kind of does make points 115. The Weasel is Icarus. Weasel in this instance is literally mirroring Icarus from the Greek tale. It would seem that Weasel quote unquote flew way too close to the sun with his overplanning and his escape route with the other monsters, which in turn ended up leading to his demise. I mean, come on, the plane to Mob of the Dead is literally called Icarus. Samantha was visited by Keepers and D.E. On Derizendrak, if you happen to head to Samantha's room, you can see a bunch of drawings that she made hanging on the wall, and one of those drawings shows a Keeper coming to visit her. Now, other than this picture, not too much is known about this. There are a couple theories out there, and the main theories revolve around the Keepers wanting to protect Sam and or marking Sam in some way, so that way eventually when she gets into the pyramid, she doesn't fall under the Shadow Man's and the Apothecant's influences. It's really all up in the air. Again, not too much is known about this, but the basic idea that I can get is that the Keepers were in some way, shape, or form trying to protect Samantha because she was kind of the key to everything. Die Glock. Die Glock all has to revolve around Der Reese. Now, Der Reese was a real top secret German research facility located in Poland, and it was alleged to have housed Die Glock, aka the Bell. And it was alleged that the Bell was some sort of anti gravitational time machine or something along those lines. And if you look at the Der Reese teleporters and the alleged images of Die Glock, they look awfully similar. And if you do the flytrap Easter egg, this stone structure looks awfully similar to the alleged area where the Die Glock time machine slash anti-gravitation test would be had. The whole Die Glock Durris connection back in World of War was one of the most interesting aspects of zombies, and it's really honestly what made me so invested. Nazi occultism is incredible to read about, and it's very, very fascinating. Nazi Denizens live in Noct. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to, because there's really no evidence at all, really, to suggest that denizens live in Nocturne and Toten. Like, they don't have apartment complexes over there. They're not putting a deposit down or anything. But this does remind me of a really old theory back in the original Black Ops 2 Transit days, 
that people would think that the denizens were all coming from Nocturne Toten, the one in the cornfields on Green Run. And the reason for this was because of the fog and they didn't really see where the denizens came from. You would just see the denizens coming out of the fog, coming to attack you. And eventually when people found that Nocturne Toten was in the cornfield in the fog, they kind of sloppily put two and two together and made it seem that the denizens lived in Noct and that's where they came from. And that's really all I got for that. If you know anything more about that, please let me know down below in the comments. Shangri-La is on Mars. Now this is definitely one of my favorites because it's true and it's not true. This literally divided the community for so many years and only really until recently have we been able to figure this out. So the original theory was that the Shangri-La we play as takes place on Mars. And the reason for that was because of various reasons. Number one, some of the texture files on Shangri-La refer to these mountains as being on Mars. Number two, Jimmy Zelensky had a lot of cryptic tweets about Shangri-La and Mars that led a lot of people to also believe it. Number three, in Black Ops 3, the moon used for the solar eclipse in the Easter egg is one of Mars's moons. And number four, on Tagder Toten, there's an Easter egg that you can do that will show you Mars. Feels like Russ man's turning into a fucking ice cube. And it so happens that that easter egg uses the same music as the loading screen for Shangri-La. So this led a lot of people to believe that Shangri-La is on Mars, but that's only half true. Shangri-La is not on Mars, it's in the Himalayas. But when you do the solar eclipse and you travel back in time, now Shangri-La is no longer on the Earth, now it is on Mars. There is a entire rabbit hole that you can go down that deals with the Vril Society, time travel, and displacement, but ultimately it comes down to this. There was a society on Mars that was Shangri-La, but eventually Shangri-La got moved to Earth, and we just go back and forth when we do the eclipse easter egg. So yes, during the eclipse, Shangri-La is on Mars, but when you're just regularly playing without the eclipse, it is on Earth and the Himalayas. The Monkey Bomb is sentient. This one is definitely one of my favorites. The Monkey Bomb is actually pretty talkative, and it's led a lot of people to believe that it is sentient. There are various things that you can do to get different responses from the Monkey Bomb that make it pretty much seem like it has a mind of its own. Hello, that tickles! Let's play! Hello, friend! I'm Mr. Monkey! Let's be friends! I wanna play! You look friendly! The teleporters cause insanity. I believe this is a reference to one of the ciphers on Zetsuba Nishima, which is from Maxis and it reads like this, Richthofen must understand that using these teleporters to jump between dimensions is both dangerous and imprecise. At any point the fabric of space and time could collapse if the proper amounts of 115 are not maintained. I am also concerned about the unknown effects of trans-dimensional jumps. I have noticed even with my brief travels that new memories and emotions have flooded my mind, suddenly appearing from nowhere. I am also sure something is happening on a molecular level as well. So it appears that Maxis is slowly starting to lose it with all this new information that's entering his head with the repeated teleporter jumps. But that's not it, because in 1939, on July 2nd, Maxis and Richthofen begin teleportation experiments with the matter transference prototype. To mild success, the subjects are teleported, but their chemical composition is altered, leaving them catatonic and changed. August 5th. Using element 115, Maxis and Richthofen resurrect one of the teleported corpses for the first time. Initially, it obeys, but soon becomes rabid and attacks them. The test subject is euthanized. So this made it seem like one of the reasons for these zombies being barbaric and rabid was because they were teleported and their chemical composition was altered. 
and then when you introduce 115 and they become a zombie they're just crazy so this does leave a little credence to teleportation causing insanity their Reese was a real facility we kind of touched upon this in the die glock portion but actually i've already explained this in a video so i'll let past me explain it for you Project Reese, or The Giant, was a codename for a construction project of Nazi Germany between 1943 and 1945, and unlike the Reese and the video games, this one consisted of seven underground structures in the Owl Mountains, which at the time was in Nazi Germany, but today it is now in Poland. And allegedly this is where they did all of their scientific research for their secret Wonderwaff program. And one of them was allegedly Die Glock, aka The Bell, which was supposedly an anti-gravity machine that looked like a flying saucer and was used in conjunction with an above ground structure known as the Henge, and the Henge is the flytrap easter egg that you see in Doris. The bell was described as a saucer shaped device made from hard heavy metal that was filled with a substance similar to mercury and required enormous amount of electrical power for testing. And like I said, the bell was alleged some sort of anti-gravity slash time machine for the Nazis. And the theory goes kind of like this, the scientists and technicians who worked on the bell who did not die of its effects were wiped out by the SS towards the end of the war, and the device was moved to an unknown location. And there's also a theory that the SS official Hans Kammler, I hope that's how you pronounce it, later secretly traded this technology to the US in exchange for his freedom, which does fall in line with a lot of zombies lore, so Treyarch really did their research. And the concrete ring, aka the Henge, aka the flytrap easter egg, built in 1943 and 44, was supposedly used as a launch pad for the bell but other people seem to claim that it was merely just the structure for an ordinary industrial cooling tower but i like the uh nazi occultism a little bit more peter mccain corrupts your game did you know that in world at war shinonuma peter mccain can glitch your game now just who the heck is peter mccain well, he's the man hanging around in spawn and with the power of explosives you're actually able to knock him down on the ground and if you stand over him you die. There's two takeaways from this. One, World at War has too many glitches to count. And two, let the dead rest in peace. Leave Peter alone. The Keepers are the Occult. Now this could have two different meanings, one with the Vril, or two in game-wise with the Ancient Order of the Keepers. Let's talk about the Vril first. The Vril, or the Vrilia, originates from a book from 1871 called Vril, The Power of the Coming Race, which is about a young independent traveler who comes across a superior subterranean master race and the energy form called Vril. And in this form, the Vrilia live in a utopia. They have great telepathic abilities and can transmit information, get rid of pain, and put others to sleep, and are very advanced in every single way. And according to some people, in the late 1930s and early 1940s, there was a society in Berlin called the Society for Truth, or the Vril Society, who dedicated their entire life looking for the Vril. And all of this is basically what the Keepers in Call of Duty Zombies are based off of. And in the game, that transfers over to the Ancient Order of the Keepers. And we get a good mention of this in some of the radios on Shadows of Evil. Hey Mr. Rat. So, I went by the market again today. For some reason, the fruit seller was much more talkative even if what he said was more than a little crazy. He told me that when he was a boy, his uncle would get drunk and start talking about how a dark force cast its shadow over the city, how good and evil were battling right on our doorstep, and that the only thing holding back the forces of the apocalypse was the ancient order of the keepers. Well, even if what he said was more than a little crazy, I'm not sure he was. Even though they're scared, or maybe because they are, people are talking more. Asking around, I've heard more than a few whispers about this ancient order and the Keepers. I think it's some kind of cult. They say you can hear them chanting sometimes. From beneath the city. There's all these rumors about human sacrifices and freaky shit that even the police won't investigate. Because they've been paid off, or because they're too damn scared. I'm not sure what to believe anymore. So the Keepers are definitely tied to many occult-like things. Mob of the Dead was real. This one's a little on the nose, but did you know that Mob of the Dead was real? 
And I'm not just talking about the location Alcatraz Prison off of the San Francisco Bay. I'm talking about the escape story, which while isn't identical, has glaring parallels. For six months leading up to June 11th, 1962, four prisoners, John Clarence Anglin, Frank Morris, and Alan West plotted an escape from the inescapable maximum security federal prison, Alcatraz. On that fateful night, when everyone was asleep, they slid fake paper mache heads under their sheets, removed the makeshift grates covering the holes they had chipped away in the back of their cells, climbed their way through a maze of pipes up to their hidden workshop above the cell blocks where they had makeshift rafts and vests waiting for them, then made their way to the rooftop, then the shore, then floated off into the frigid waters of the San Francisco Bay completely undetected. But here's the thing. Alan West actually never escaped. While the other three prisoners were busy doing the impossible, it turns out that the hole that West had carved in the back of his cell was actually blocked by a pipe, unbeknownst to him, and thus was forced to stay. To this day, the escapees have not been found or convicted, confirmed dead or alive. And while there is quite a raging debate as to whether or not they actually lived, the bottom line is they escaped the inescapable. Treyarch took inspiration from one of the most fascinating stories in human history, and zombified it. The four mobsters, Sal DeLuca, Billy Handsome, Finn O'Leary, and Albert Weasel Arlington, also plot their escape from Alcatraz via plane in this instance. After duping and killing the warden, they retrieve said plane parts stashed throughout the island to then make their way to the rooftop to fly off to freedom but unfortunately crash into the Golden Gate Bridge. Now these two groups of prisoners are very similar, especially when looking at their fractured dynamic, that 3-1 split. In real life, Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers managed to escape while Alan West is unfortunately left behind, despite being the main proprietor of the plan. In Mob of the Dead, when their plan fails and the plane crashes, Sal, Finn, and Billy murder Al Arlington as revenge for devising the unsuccessful plan. If you zoom in a little closer, the parallel between Alan West and Albert Arlington are even more uncanny. They were both the ones that were quote-unquote left behind, and their names even sound eerily similar. Mob of the Dead did such an amazing job retelling the story in their own way. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay in and of itself is also fantastic, but it's the story that drives what is arguably the greatest zombies map of all time. Pacquiao is linked to the Shadow Man. The only thing I could find from this was one of the radios in The Giant where Takio alludes to seeing the Shadow Man in his dreams. Takio, Takio, brave uphold all the dying samurai spirit. It feels almost as though I am speaking to my ancestors. Instead, I speak to a reflection of myself. The man in the mirror, in another place, another time. How our allies are filled with confidence and bravado. But I am troubled. My dreams are haunted by a man in shadow. I fear this vision may be a portent of our destruction. And it seems like all throughout Zombies, Takio has kind of had like a sixth sense on things that are to come. So it would make sense that out of all the characters, Takio would be the most linked to the Shadow Man. <laughs> Division 9 is Unit 731. So Division 9 in Call of Duty Zombies is directly taken from Unit 731, which is short for Manchu Detachment 731, also known as the Kamo Detachment and the Ishi Unit. And this was a highly secret covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Imperial Japanese Army that engaged in lethal human experimentation and biological weapons manufacturing during the Second Sino-Japanese War, aka World War II, because we all know World War II started with the invasion of China by Japan. It was not the invasion of Poland. The Japanese, in my opinion, started World War II. And Unit 731 was responsible for some of the worst war crimes or atrocities that I've ever seen committed. These included disease injections, controlled dehydration, biological weapons testing, hypobaric pressure chamber testing, which is pretty much where you're in a chamber and they mess with the pressure, so just use your imagination on that one, vivisections without anesthesia, organ harvesting, amputations, and standard weapon testing. And victims not only included men, they also included women, including pregnant women, and children and babies. And this only scratches a surface of the horrors that this group inflicted upon people. If you are interested in history and want to see a group that was way worse than the Nazis, 
definitely read up on Unit 731, because those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Pat Durice One Pick. In Black Ops 1 in the main menu, you can get out of the chair and access the terminal. And in that, you can hack into the CIA server and unlock a ton of zombies information. Everything from Wonder Weapons information to Maxis's private logs to some of the more important stuff like Durice One Pick, which shows us a concept art of Durice. This gives us their vision for what they had wanted to happen with Durice and the trench gun hallway. And just by looking at it, you can see that they wanted it to be way more scary, way more bloody, and way more looking like a zombie massacre had happened than it being abandoned. And Der Reese was not the only one. We also have Gov After Hours, which gives us a look at the five labs. And we also have a bunch of Kino. We got the Kino Alley. We also have the Kino Speed Cola Room. And we have the Kino Lobby and the Kino Theater itself. So if you've never hacked into the computer in Black Ops 1, definitely give it a try. There is tons of unique zombie information littered throughout. Definitely worth a read. So that is going to complete the Zombies Iceberg. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and if you guys did, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know some more random slash miscellaneous zombie facts because... I just think it's really interesting. And also, if you would like to get videos early like these sexy Patreons on screen right now, like Brian Hahn, Person Person, Dirty Dan, Fat Lucky Potato, Icy Storm, B Rad the Man, Giovanni Diaz, Ortega Burgos, Dr. Dopey, May Y'all, G Daddy Smackdown, Org, Mr. Ridgeway, and Henry Heiberg, make sure to check out the Patreon. Link will be down there below in the description. And that's gonna be it. Leave.